Thank you all for coming to this, our final informational forum. The forum is being filmed so that you can be placed, it can be placed on the Grace Church website for all to view. We are here this morning to present and discuss the various projects that are included for funding in Grace Church's proposed capital campaign. I want to emphasize proposed capital campaign. As you are aware, the ad hoc committee started to meet last spring to investigate the possibility of conducting a campaign to raise funds to support the necessary projects that the church is unable to fund by income from member pledges. The purpose of our committee was to determine what projects should be included, to prioritize the projects, and to gauge the church members' support for conducting a campaign at this time. We have already received many suggestions from the congregation. Whether or not we go forward with the capital campaign is not definite yet. Approval to proceed comes from the church membership at a congregational meeting. We are hoping to be ready for that meeting after the Sunday service on April 7th, which is only four weeks away. Our consultant, Jill White, at the UCC Building and Loan Fund Office has been very helpful to our committee guided us through the various steps to determine if conducting campaign would be feasible at this time. She has interviewed 27 of you asking various questions that would help her determine the church member enthusiasm. From her discussions with our members, she offered two suggestions to our committee before we proceed to a congregational vote. First, Additional and more detailed information for the proposed projects needed to be presented. There were questions as to the why for some projects, and that some of those interviewed thought that they were covered in a previous capital campaign. Also, some projects that were proposed in the previous campaign were never done. Why was that? It was probably because we didn't raise the amount of money we were hoping to raise. Second, what, are, what is the priority ranking of the projects now being proposed? Are there some projects that are very high on the list that desperately need to be completed, while others need only be considered if sufficient funds are raised? Last Sunday, as well as this Sunday, you have found in your church bulletin a green colored project rating sheet. It is very important that you complete this form and return it to Bruce Bat, uh, Peacock or the church office as soon as you can. It's very important that you complete this form, I just said that. Um, Bruce will <coughs> input all the information received into the Excel spreadsheet to come up with a final average ranking of various projects being proposed. Using this information, we'll arrive at two, uh, two costs, one for those projects deemed high priority and the other for those projects that can be considered only if adequate funds are raised, i.e. the stretch projects, thus creating a two-tier goal. Many of you have asked if we are looking into available grants to help with funding. The answer is yes. Last week, a letter of intent was submitted to the National Fund for Sacred Places organization to help fund the steeple and stained glass window projects. If successful, their grant would fund half of those two projects' costs. The Security Committee is also looking for potential security grants that may become available. Other churches that we have been in contact with have, have helped with such grants and paying for the installation of their security systems. The cost estimate fig figure given in the brochure for security assumes that a grant will be awarded. We will now proceed with a PowerPoint presentation describing the various projects being considered and in no particular order of priority. The order was chosen only because of the presenter's other scheduled commitments at this time. So I now turn this over to Alistair, who will be the first presenter. Alistair? So I'm going to talk about two uh, different parts of the campaign. The first one is bringing the organ console from the balcony down to the sanctuary floor. The plan is, is to take the console, which is the bit that I play at, kind of hidden behind the uh, wall there, uh, 
take that object and place it on a dolly that can then be moved uh, to various locations on the sanctuary floor. It'll be plugged in using an ethernet cord, just a very small cord, into various ports and you'll see these black boxes. So we can use those and there'll probably be another couple of ports put around. So the reason for doing this is, um, first of all, when you're that close to the organ, it's very, very difficult to actually hear the instrument as you hear it out here in the congregation. Uh, it's a very, very loud instrument up there uh, and you can't really hear how the sound blossoms and works in the room. So having the organ console downstairs would allow the organist to really be able to blend the sound properly with the choir as you should. Uh, and also to, to hear the organ as you hear it, which is really important for any musician. Uh, it would also allow the choir to condense and, and form a kind of whole unified sound in the middle there too. We would move the, the members down and they would be in the center and it would just help them considerably uh, to hear each other uh, for, for singing uh, and that kind of thing. So overall it would just be a huge improvement to the musical sound that we can create. And we're always trying to strive for excellence and, and better you know, musical quality here at Grace Church. It would also be quite educational for people to uh, see uh, what's going on. The organ is a very tactile instrument with lots of different things going on. So educational for the kids and for the congregation to see. Uh, lots of people, when, when there's a piano concert, you often want to sit and watch the pianist. But believe me, the organ is three, maybe four times more interesting than watching the piano. Uh, so here you'll see in the pictures, uh, this actually was the one of the churches I worked at in Pittsburgh. This is Heinz Memorial Chapel up in uh, the main part of Pittsburgh. And this is their big three-manual organ. And you'll see here uh, it's moved out into the center uh, aisle location for concerts. It's usually tucked in behind the, the pews right here uh, when it's not being used. But it's wonderful to have it out front there so that you can see it uh, in a in, you know, when the, when the organist is giving concerts, and we would do that here too. It, we also, the building is being used much more by orchestras and, and different ensembles, and they've often asked for the organ, you know, we're playing a piece with the Champagne Philharmonic uh, in April, and it, it, it's very, very difficult to play the instrument from up there when the rest of the orchestra is downstairs, even though there's a mirror, but the mirror is not worth too much to be honest up there. So having the organ downstairs would be much easier and we'd be able to do much more with orchestras and different ensembles, which this place, which the, the Grace Church in this space is being used much more uh, for because of this wonderful new flexible uh, front part of the sanctuary. So uh, that is what we would love to do uh, with the organ, uh, improving not just uh, the organist's uh, ability, but also the, the general sound of the choir uh, altogether. So, uh, The other thing I'm going to talk about, I believe, is the improved sanctuary lighting. Uh, what we would love to see is, uh, perhaps today is a pretty good, uh, you know, example of the day. I mean, it's not, it's kind of dull, the, you know, it's brighter than it was. But if you can imagine, you know, uh, we often rehearse for three hours on end in, in this space, you know, and to have uh, the lighting just from these three these, well actually, <laughs> one of them's out, these five spotlights here, uh, you know, it, it really has a huge strain on your eyes. Uh, and it's very difficult to differentiate uh, musical you know, notes and all the rest of it. So uh, the plan would be to, um, and not just for musicians, but also to create an atmosphere for various different types of services. You know, we have the Tenebrae service coming right up on Monday, Thursday. Um, and we've been doing other evening services like the All Saints evening service. And so various things like that, we would be able to create much, uh, a much better atmosphere for worship environments but also for concerts and things like that and for rehearsing. You'll actually notice we have some lighting in today for the concert tonight. Uh, and what a, a wonderful um, addition it is to tonight's concert to have some you know, different lighting effects and everything. Um, and this actually does cost the music department a little bit of money to bring in this, uh, this lighting, perhaps not just a little bit of money, but all that could be saved if we could improve our own lighting because we could also have different colored lighting and that kind of thing, you know, as part of the project. And the idea would be uh, to put another couple of banks like these uh, spotlights behind that, uh, whatever that's called, that bit of the church there, there, and perhaps one more at the back, so you'd have three extra banks of lights lighting up not just uh, the choir, but the pulpit and, and this space down here too. I believe originally these lights were supposed to light up the cross, um, 
and they've been kind of reorientated through the years. So uh, just, you know, those six lights currently are, are trying to light up very different parts of the church, and I think each needs its own set of lighting. We would also have a spotlight recessed into the ceiling there that could light up whoever is directing things like Messiah and soloists. You saw the kids this morning, it would light them up in a, in a wonderful way too. So that's where we would, uh, that's what we're asking for in terms of improved sanctuary lighting. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Alistair. Uh, my the next subject is quite as exciting as moving the organ console or adding lighting, but paint. Look around. Look around the walls of the sanctuary and you'll see cracks and you'll see peeling paint. Not very exciting, but it's something we have to deal with. We have a quote to deal with all the cracks in the plaster and then paint, paint the sanctuary. It would be done by probably the same company that just did a marvelous job in the chapel, so take a look in there if you have any questions. Next item is replace the carpet. Just standing looking down at the carpet here, this is about as threadbare a carpet as you can get. Uh, the front especially, and the way back especially, it's just worn out, and it's been worn out for a while. Uh, Again, is it super high priority? I don't know, that's, that's for the congregation to decide. Uh, we have in enough money in the budget to replace all the carpet in the sanctuary. Another option is to just replace the carpet in the front where it's worn and the back where it's worn and not try to replace all of the carpet in the pews, which uh, adds quite a bit of expense. Another idea brought up by the music department is to strip the carpet out of the front and put down hardwood. Hardwood, uh, according to Alistair, would improve the acoustics of this room tremendously. If if carpet, replacing carpet, uh, gets to be a higher priority, we get to the point of doing it, then we'll sit down and say, okay, here are the pros and cons of replacing with hardwood or replacing with carpet, and, uh, and the church will decide then uh, how, to, how to proceed. Uh, next, uh, Esther's going to talk about the steeple. Um, I wanted to talk about the steeple a bit. Um, we don't have that in here to look at, but do you know that the steeple is visual from four different directions as you enter Rutland? It's beautiful. Do you really, do you, do you appreciate, I'm sure you all do, the fact that we light the star, especially um, during the holiday time? And I think the star was continuously lit um, during the COVID period. So it's like a fisherman coming in and, you know, seeing the light from the lighthouse and it just inspires this community. So currently we need to address a repair and, and painting situation um, for the steeple. If you will take a look, it, and you, if you look at this picture, you can see that there are black spots here and there all over the steeple, particularly out on the west side and on the south side. Those are either missing shingles or they are rotted shingles or the paint has just washed away. The steeple was <clears throat> painted and repaired about 12 years ago. Unfortunately, the paint that was used was not the proper paint. So, um, we don't mean to do that again. We have quotes from two um, highly respected um, steeplejacks and with their companies, so that we are pretty confident about the job that they could do. And um, we also intend to replace the few missing shingles, um, slate pieces on the top of the roof, and also to um, point the chimney, which also needs to be done. And one of our quotes, did say that we could go ahead and do, they would go ahead and do that. Lightning protection. Um, you know that um, the finial was replaced, um, actually now it's in 2022, it wasn't one year ago, it was two years ago, getting to be close to that time. It was wooden and large chunks of the wood were falling to the ground. So we had that removed and then uh, we raised the money to replace the finial. It's a six foot section at the very top of the steeple and we were advised to use copper. So that's what's up there now is copper. Um, 
So we need to really finish the lightning protection. And we did lightning protection with some leftover money from the finial project. And so we, we actually did the protection around the steeple itself, but does not encompass the rest of this building, nor the 1960s building. Um, you'll remember that um, this past year, a historic church in, in um, Spencer, Mass, was struck by lightning and absolutely destroyed. It devastated the town. The same thing could happen here, and we don't want that to happen. So um, we need some more money to finish that project. <clears throat> At the same time, our insurance premiums would be reduced by about $1,000 a year if we added that additional protection. So we're very anxious to do that. Um, stained glass windows. Um, do you know how many stained glass windows we have in this building? Yes? We have 50. We've had two stained glass window companies, both highly respected, come here, look at every window, measure it, and in uh, great detail, um, they've submitted to us what needs to be done. They've, they have uh, documented the windows that have highest priority and the ones we need um, to have done. And I think there are nine of those. <clears throat> so what's happening is that the lead stretches. When the lead stretches, the um, glass shifts and falls and if you will look sometime when you're going up into the balcony, there's a perfect example of this. Um, as you're coming down the stairs in the, well, my right hand, um, you look at that window and you see that it's bowing out. And that's from the weight of the glass and the lead stretching to let that happen. So we have that in a lot of places um, over our windows. So, um, Look around, we also need some replacement of the coverings that are on the lower windows, which are there for security reasons. The upper windows, look how much brighter they are, how much more light um, we can see through those. And that's because these coverings that are on the outside um, for protection um, are, have discolored and they need to be changed. So that's the story. Hope you all like these projects. Hello, um, I'm talking about the um, technology side of things. Um, the, a lot of us in the office and some different um, committees were talking about um, improving, uh, first of all, the Wi-Fi within the building. Um, a lot of times we have uh, various committees coming here to um, have uh, Zoom meetings and uh, oftentimes calls can get dropped because of the uh, reduced Wi-Fi signal. Um, and certainly lately, we've also had um, Zoom as an option for those, uh, for funerals that have been coming in, family members that are from elsewhere that cannot attend the, the funeral, but they want to kind of feel that they're there as well. Um, so this is something that's actually um, being asked of uh, a lot. So we're hoping to boost the signal a bit for that and um, offer that capability uh, with that. So for Zoom, um, for conferences and meetings, especially when we have the large congregational meetings here, uh, you need to have a, a really updated laptop to be able to do that. Um, currently, uh, some of us are using our personal ones to be able to, to run these kind of things. So it'd be good to have a, a dedicated laptop to be able to use for any um, committees that come in um, uh, for meetings that have presentations and also for um, things like this. Um, the other side of it is to um, have synchronized projections. As you've probably noticed in service today, we had lots of projections up as well as now. Um, and some of you may not have been able to see from where you are here. We're hoping to have it where it's synchronized up on the walls up here. So everything can be done at the same time, you know, 
when we turn the page on a PowerPoint, it's happening in both places. So that would kind of require, um, uh, we've looked into Bluetooth projections for that. Um, the third thing that we're, we're talking about is um, improvements of our website. We're hoping to do a bit of a makeover for it um, and to just um, bring it up to, to kind of the, the style of today and make it um, um, user friendly for everyone to, to find what they need to find. Um, thank you. You remember the last time we had a fundraiser, we decided we needed to replace the pew cushions. I just sat down in this one here, and there's a hole in it. Are you guys comfortable over there in it? Well, then if you mark it so, so on, your, on your green sheets to put it down in the bottom. But if you're like me, you need to sit on something soft and comfortable. That's why my wife sits in the back every Sunday, way in the back, because she can put a pillow behind her back, because that's... Pew cushions, uh, pew cushions up there are, are just as bad as they are down here. Comfort, comfort is a big thing for many of us, especially those of us who are getting older. So I would suggest giving a hard look at your pew cushions to be replaced this time around. Let's not put it off again. These are 60 year old pieces of uh, our, our uh, sanctuary that need to be attended to in order to be welcoming for people coming in. So that's pew cushions. Next thing on my list is the parish house windows. The parish house is the educational way. If you uh, spend any time in the uh, parish, uh, in the uh, fellowship hall, you'll notice our windows are not state of the art. They, we don't have screens, we don't have the ability to open them easily in the, in the summer. <clears throat> They're not very energy efficient. The whole wing has windows of equal status, including the lamps section of the building. We would love to be able to replace these windows. We have an estimate. The number's on the sheet. I would encourage you to rate that highly. By the way, remember, when you fill out these green sheets, Rate them from 1 to 15, 1 being the one you want to have done first. 15 is the one you wanted to have done last. And we, if we have a two-tier outcome with our pledge, pledge monies, we will not be able to do those bump things on the bottom of the list. So just keep that in mind. This is why this, in pre, this uh, rating system is important. As far as the energy efficiency is go goes. This came up as a result of partially the windows and, and the fact that we have new furnaces in our building and we talked about what's the best way to heat this place down the road? What's the best thing to do for the windows? What kind of windows do we want? How about energy efficiency? Do we know enough about the energy demands of this building and the educational building to, to be able to make an intelligent decision on uh, which projects we need to do and how much money we can save in the long run, especially how much we can save for energy consumption, which is something everybody's thinking about these days. So, by doing an energy audit, we can figure that, all that out. Um, as part of this process of energy efficiency, we want to think about uh, expanding our uh, and, uh, heat pumps in our educational wing. We have them in, in the little lamb section. We would like to put them in the offices downstairs as well. These are, these are built rooms that are in the basement. In the basement, they're kind of cool in the summer, but they're terrible to heat in the, in the winter months. And the heating is, is an issue where the heat pumps are suggested to be augmenting the heat system that we currently have. Again, part of the energy audit will help us with that. That's what I'm going to say, and that's it. Bye. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about security. So uh, whether some of you are aware of it or not, over the past year or two, we've had uh, people who've made their way into the church. I'm not sure how they got in, but they've uh, spent the overnight in the balcony or maybe in the attic. So we uh, put a committee together, and we're trying to uh, come up with a list of things that we can do security here within the church. Uh, one of those things is an access control system. 
which uh, the simplest way of describing it is a card key system so that during the day we can have the doors to the church closed when we want to or we can have them open but if they are closed uh, church leaders and uh, various committee members would still have access to the church and Krista would then be able to also let visitors in uh, remotely so if somebody could come to the door and say I'm so and so can uh, I'm here for a meeting and she could let them in so those are one of the things that we can do uh, another thing we're looking at doing uh, is to install an actual handicap controls on our handicap doors so the doors we consider that are handicapped are our center street door and west street door and the only reason we call them handicapped is because they're at the ground level so uh, by putting actual controls on the door, push button control, somebody who was handicapped could push the button and the door could open for them. And so that would be one of the other things as part of our um, part of our project. We have a whole list of things here that we're going to try to pursue depending on how much money we raise. Uh, and some of the uh, project we're hoping will be able to apply for some federal grants. We won't know until uh, grant money becomes available, and we apply for it, and uh, hopefully we'll get something. So feel free to uh, come see me with any questions you might have, or, uh, or if you have any ideas that you'd like to uh, offer to our committee. Thank you. Two of the members of the Mission and Service Committee that would normally be here to, uh, to address this component of the capital campaign uh, goals are out of town and couldn't be with us today. Uh, so I reached out to Kathy Willis, who is the chairman of that committee, and asked her if she'd put something together uh, that we could read here today. So that's, that's what I'll do. And these are, this is what Kathy had to say. Not knowing how much money mission and service will actually receive from the capital campaign, we have not yet set any specific goals. In line with our desire to support the community locally and to reach out globally as well, we do have two main objectives. First, we would like to make a more sizable and predictable contribution to companions and wholeness. The collaboration of churches and other agencies whose goal is to meet the needs of the folks in the Rutland area who struggle with homelessness, food insecurity, a lack of social services, a need for shelter from the elements, etc. We also know that the program may be seeking a new home to better suit the needs of its guests. While Grace Church cannot meet the enormous need of our, on our own, we could make a sizable contribution toward that in the future. Internationally, we'd like to provide additional support to HEAL, Jen Wright's Children's Home and Secondary School in Kenya, which had Grace has generously supported since its inception almost 15 years ago. In particular, we'd like to fully sponsor a second student paying school tuition and room and board. We could also provide funds for specific projects which will encourage sustainability, such as the purchase of cows, chickens, maize, and other crops. It is this capital campaign's, this capital campaign committee's opinion that once mission funds are received, their use will be subject to input from and approval by the congregation. Those funds may be used to support existing mission and service projects, support new projects, or a mixture of both, depending on congregational input. And just as an FYI, if the congregation does approve to go ahead with, with the, this campaign, 40% of the administration fees being charged by the UCC Building and Loan Fund Group will, will come back towards mission, will be donated towards mission projects. Of that 40%, 15% will go to local mission projects that Grace Church itself designates. Thank you. I'm going to wrap up the last two projects. Parish House Electrical. We've been tripping breakers recently, mainly when people are making coffee, both in Fellowship Hall Kitchen and in the parlor kitchen. Mary uh, was serving uh, this morning and she said, you're not getting cold coffee today, you're getting cold cider. So that was a good thing. Uh, we're not really sure what happens. Why are we tripping the breakers? It's probably more than one appliance is uh, plugged into one outlet. 
But what's happened is they lost lights in the chapel or lost electricity in the chapel uh, one time when this happened. Uh, I think it was New Year's Day, we had a sanctuary service in the Fellowship Hall and uh, people were running around looking for where the breaker box was because breakers had been tripped and the projector wasn't working and the sound system wasn't working and I think they found the breaker, where was it Doug? Out in the hallway towards Little Lambs, is that where the breaker was? So not in Fellowship Hall. And then when they tripped the breaker in, uh, or that served the parlor kitchen, ran around looking for the breaker box, that was in Fellowship Hall. So I don't know the rhyme or reason of, of how these circuits were set up, but clearly we need an electrician to come in and take a look. Is this an electrical problem? Or are these circuits just designed 60 years ago and not capable of handling what we're putting to them? So we'll have an electrician come in, take a look at all the circuits that affect parlor, har parlor kitchen and fellowship hall kitchen and maybe run some new wires, which when you have cinder block construction is a considerable expense as you have to run conduit outside. So that's, that's what that project's about. The last one is the Fellowship Hall stage curtain. Now, the stage doesn't get used all that much recently, but if you look at it, the curtain is pretty ragged. It's old and it's worn. It's still, still functional, but it's just ragged. Take a look at it for yourself and, and you decide. I ask people to not talk about costs during their projects so we can just summarize them here all at the end. The steeple repair and painting that Esther talked about uh, the quote, which includes the slate for the bearing, brick pointing, is 165000 Sanctuary plaster repair and painting is 23400 because that's just the walls. It's not the ceiling or any of the, the fancy woodwork. Stained glass window repair that Esther talked about, that's to replace nine windows. Very, very expensive. They have to take them out, all, each one completely out, and ship it back to the factory or back to their workshop, completely take it apart, replace all the leads. So very, very expensive. That's just nine windows, and they're the nine worst windows, as, as Esther mentioned. Replace all 63 windows that Greg talked about. The, the quote is for 43,000. That, that includes the storm windows. Replace the sanctuary carpet. I mentioned that, you know, we have two, 70,000 is for carpet in the whole building. And the, uh, I believe it's 30,000 or so for just doing the front and the, and the back parts. Not sure what the cost to do hardwood up here is if we decide to do that instead. Replace all the pew cushions in, in the, both the sanctuary, both downstairs and upstairs, is $43,000. I understand these are two and a half inches thick and very comfortable. Finish the lightning project. Uh, when property did this uh, project in, 1920, in 2022, the, the cost to for protection on the rest of the building was 18,000. We put 20,000 in because inflation, right? Replace Fellowship Hall curtain. Uh, we don't have any hard quotes, but we're guessing that would be about $10,000. Parish Hall Electrical, again, we won't know until we get an electrician in to go through everything and to see what it is. We're ballparking about 20,000 for that. Technology upgrades, again, we're ballparking about $35,000 for the three or four things that, um, did I get it wrong? Technology upgrades, 20,000, sorry. Oh, I guess I've skipped here. Ongoing security upgrades. Uh, Doug mentioned that he's a whole list of stuff. We've put in $86,000. That would cover some of it. Hopefully we'll get grants to cover a lot, a lot more. The technology upgrades uh, for the things that Christopher mentioned is 20,000, but uh, just a ballpark. Sanctuary lighting, again, it's a ballpark. We don't have, don't have hard quotes on that, uh, but about 35,000, we're thinking we would cover that. Move the organ console. We do know that will cost about fifty-six thousand dollars, but uh, music committee has already raised a certain portion, so thirty-five thousand is what it would cost to complete that project. Energy efficiency audit and heat pumps from the offices. Again, it's a ballpark estimate of about thirty thousand dollars. 
The admin fees, uh, as Mike mentioned, the, the full admin fee is a little bit more than that. That's just the fee, that's about 60% of the fee because we've included the 40% that goes to mission in our mission number. And as Mike, as Mike mentioned, we talked about about 10% of the money we raise would go to mission if, if the congregation decides that. So if you add it all up, it's about $90,000. $900,000, thank you. We hope, as Greg mentioned, to be able to split these projects into two tiers, top tier and second tier, and uh, based on your input on the uh, surveys. And then we'll, uh, we'll report out on what that is.